Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, an MPV from Mitsubishi, the Expander Cross, and a premium compact sedan from BMW, the 318i Sport. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the Chevrolet Tracker 1.0 Redline versus the Toyota Raze 1.0 Turbo CVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about understanding your car's handling. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the Suzuki Espresso Media Drive in Baguio City as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Mitsubishi. So you want an MPV for the family but you don't want it to be a mom mobile. Perhaps the Mitsubishi Expander Cross is for you. This car review takes a look at Mitsubishi's entry into the seven-seater MPV segment. Mitsubishi first rolled out the Expander in 2017 as a seven-seater multi-purpose vehicle in Indonesia. It took a year before Mitsubishi Philippines brought it to the country, and it was a hit in the local MPV crossover segment as it was in the region. But competition in the MPV segment is fierce, and Mitsubishi, listening to customer suggestions, wants and needs, unveiled the Expander Cross, an upgrade that moves the MPV closer to SUV from crossover level. The latest Mitsubishi Expander Cross, all 4,595 millimeters long, 1,790 millimeters wide, and 1,750 millimeters tall while sitting 225 millimeters off the ground can stand among SUVs on parking lots without looking out of place. The Expander Cross gives a dynamic shield concept, the steroid treatment, along with new front and rear bumpers and 17-inch two-tone alloy wheels to make it look more like an SUV. The Expander Cross can be immediately recognized on the road, day and night, from the T-shaped headlamps housing three projector LED lights matched by the T-shaped LED rear combination lamps. The Expander Cross also comes with front fog lamps, roof rails, and fin-type antenna. The Expander Cross interior has been given a major makeover with premium soft-touch materials on the dash, the doors, and the sides. One gets into the cabin with Mitsubishi's keyless operation system, locking and unlocking the doors and starting the engine with a push of a button with key fob in pocket or bag. The seats are upholstered in navy blue and black synthetic leather with a heat guard that helps keep the seats cool on hot days. The leather steering wheel with multiple buttons and controls on the Expander Cross should look familiar to Montero owners. 
It tilts at telescopes and returns to linear position even when driving at a slow speed. The cabin dash looks premium, classy and high-tech, especially with the 8-inch digital LCD meter cluster. The digital air conditioning controls with clearly laid out buttons and large toggle switches and control temp, fan speed and aircon modes. And the 7-inch touchscreen smartphone lake display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. While looking like a proper SUV, the Expander Cross provides much of what families look for in spacious MPV that can comfortably sit 7. There's a front armrest with console box and tissue holder between the well bolstered driver and front passenger seats, and a second row seat with fold down armrest with beverage holders. Mitsubishi also thought of families who love their gadgets and included Type A and C USB ports and two 12 volt accessory outlets, one in the front, another on the third row. The Expander Cross is powered by Mitsubishi's 4A91 DOHC 16 valve 1499cc inline 4 gasoline engine with MyVac that generates 104.5 PS and 141 Nm of torque. This is mated to a 4 speed automatic transmission that sends all that power and torque to the front wheels. With the highest minimum ground clearance in class, the Mitsubishi Expander Cross should give drivers confidence in tackling flooded streets. This should prove useful in these days of sudden downpours flooding major thoroughfares in the metro. Mitsubishi has also improved the ride and handling of the Expander Cross, which comes with a suspension featuring McPherson struts with coil spring and stabilizer in front and the rear torsion beam suspension system found in the Montero. The brakes feature front disc and rear drums combo but comes with anti-lock brake system and electronic brake force distribution and brake assist. Also aiding driver on the road is a number of automotive technologies like active stability and traction control, active yaw control, hill start assist, and for parking, a reverse camera. Also added for safety are driver and front passenger airbags, three-point seat belts for seven, isofix, and tether anchors. The Mitsubishi Expander Cross is listed at 1.328 million, which should make this MPV and SUV guys appeal to loyalists and lure more to the brand. The latest auto industry news and developments, right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track, and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS, bring on the thrill. Life should be filled with stories, to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences. With Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind, with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City. Elevate your drive. Welcome back to Autofocus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Over three days, Audi Philippines showcased its local lineup of full electric vehicles, including the recently launched Audi Q8 e-tron at what it called the Audi driving experience. During the event, people were invited to check out the Audi EVs now available in the country and to participate in driving activities designed to showcase the capabilities of Audi EVs while serving to dispel misconceptions about battery-powered SUVs. We're now in BGC. We're launching the Q8 e-tron. Uh, we have obstacle courses and you can drive it off-road. And then we also have the wading pool wherein you could put the car, you could drive the car in 500 millimeter water. So to prove that electric cars is capable of doing still okay on the 
flooded water. Audi claims to have the biggest lineup of full electric vehicles in the local market, while also touting that it leads sales of full-sized EVs in the country. The Audi Q8 e-tron is the latest addition to its lineup. The new Audi Q8 e-tron has a more modern design. We've updated the front bumper to give it a more modern look. So the Q8 e-tron now has a black mask, which is reminiscent to the gasoline Q8 that we have. We also have the single frame projection light, wherein the Audi rings are highlighted and the car would appear wider during night time. And it gives so much presence when other people can see it uh, out on the road. Toyota Motor Philippines has added another hybrid vehicle to its lineup of electrified vehicles. The launch of the all-new Yaris Cross HEV highlighted the Go Electrified with Toyota Fair held at the Bonifacio High Street Amphitheater at Bonifacio Global City. One of the highlights of our um, Go Electrified activity is the launch of our latest model, the all-new Yaris Cross. It is our latest entry to our expanding uh, electrified vehicle lineup and it is so far our most affordable hybrid model in our lineup. The all-new Yaris Cross is also available with a more conventional internal combustion engine. The Yaris Cross basically comes in three variants. The S, top of the line, which is our hybrid model. And then we also have the 1.5G and 1.5V grades, which are the uh, lower grade variants. And uh, it's packed with a lot of great specifications like panoramic moonroof, a lot of uh, safety features, and 360 monitor, all packed in a very stylish five-seater uh, compact SUV. Visitors got a chance to check out the all-new Yaris as well as other hybrid vehicles of Toyota at the Go Electrified Fair. Uh, the first activity is the car display. Uh, you can see the cars uh, firsthand and of course our Toyota team and Lexus team are here to guide you on the specifications you have if the customers have any specifications. We also have a test drive. Not only can you touch and feel and see the vehicles up close and personal but you can actually feel the experience of driving hybrid vehicles, how quiet, how efficient sounding they are, and the overall riding comfort. The Go Electrified Fair is just one of the activities being held by TMP this August to celebrate its 35th anniversary. This year, this month, is a very special time for Toyota because we are celebrating our 35 years of a good working relationship with our partners, and the good service to our customers that we have been giving. And also, we thank all the customers for being with us for the past 35 years. And uh, there's a lot of events this month for a celebration of uh, our 35th anniversary, including this uh, electrification campaign. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break Stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on 
हेड टू हेड In this week's edition of Head to Head, pits the Chevrolet Tracker 1.0 Red Line against the Toyota Race 1.0 Turbo CVT in a spec-to-spec compare. The subcompact SUV market is among the most crowded on local shores. Chevrolet chose to compete in the segment with a Tracker, which came ahead of the Race, which Toyota brought in much later as an option to compete with the subcompact SUVs in the more affordable end of the market. Topping the Chevrolet Tracker range is the LT 1.0 Redline, against which is the top-of-the-line Toyota Race 1.0 Turbo CVT. The Chevy Tracker LT Redline is 4,217 millimeters long. 1,791 millimeters wide and 1,627 millimeters tall, with a 2,570 millimeter long wheelbase and minimum ground clearance of 161 mm. The Toyota Rage is 4,030 millimeters long, 1,710 millimeters wide and 1,605 millimeters tall, and with a ground clearance of 200 millimeters. The Chevy Tracker LT Redline comes with red exterior accents and trim found on the wide horizontal beam of the grille with a black Chevy bow tie, the gloss black side mirrors, and the 17-inch black alloy wheels. The Redline also features an electric sliding panoramic sunroof, LED projector headlamps with manual leveling and auto on-off function, daytime running lights that double as turn indicators, side mirrors with power adjust and heater functions as well as integrated turn signals. LED tail lamps, black B pillars, lower body molding, rear fog lamps, rear spoiler, high mount top lamp, and roof antenna. The top of the line Rays 1.0 Turbo CVT features an exterior with a two-tone look with roof and two of three pillars blacked out, split type LED headlamps with line guide, front LED sequential turn signal lamps, piano black rear back door garnish, power adjusting outside rear view mirrors with auto fold function. Daytime running lights, front halogen fog lamps, rear LED combination lamps, rear spoiler, fin type antenna, 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 205 60R17 tires. Chevrolet equipped the Tracker Redline with a passive entry system and push button start. The Tracker Redline cabin features a black interior with jet black fall leather seats with red double stitching dual barrel sports instrument panel and leather wrapped D-shaped steering wheel with audio controls. The driver's seat can be adjusted six ways with a unique combination of power and manual system. The front passenger's seat adjusts four ways. The back row seat for three splits and folds 60-40 and features retractable headrest. Other comfort and convenience features include automatic climate control, AC cabin pollen filter, power windows and rear window defogger. The Toyota Rays 1.0 Turbo CVT comes with smart keyless entry and push button start. The 5-seater Rays features seats upholstered in fabric and synthetic leather material. The front seats manually adjust six ways for driver and four ways for passenger. The rear setback reclines and splits and folds 60-40. The top of the line Rays features a leather wrapped steering wheel that manually tilts and comes with controls for the audio, multi-information display, power mode as well as paddle shifters. It is also equipped with power windows, illuminated entry system, automatic air conditioning, and speed sensing power door locks. The dash features digital meter cluster, 7-inch TFT multi-information display, and fuel economy meter. Other standard features include seat back pockets, under seat tray, multiple cup and bottle holders, sun visors with vanity mirror, day and night rear view mirrors, 12-volt outlet, and USB chargers in front and back. The Tracker Redline infotainment system features a floating 8-inch colored touchscreen display with the latest version of the Chevrolet MyLink infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth, a tuner, video player, and six speakers. The Ray's infotainment system features a 9-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, AM FM radio, USB, voice command, and six speakers. The Chevrolet Tracker is powered by the lightweight new generation 1.0 liter 3 cylinder DOHC Ecotec turbo engine that generates 116 horsepower at 5800 RPM and 175 Nm of torque at 1500 to 4200 RPM. 
This is mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission delivering power and torque to the front wheels. The suspension features McPherson struts in front and compound crank rear axle system in the rear. Stopping power comes from an all-wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The top-of-line Rays is powered by a 3-cylinder 998cc turbocharged 12-valve DOHC engine with VVTi technology that generates 98 PS and 140 Nm of torque. This is mated to a continuously variable transmission that drives the front wheels. The Ray suspension system uses front McPherson struts and rear torsion beams. The brake system uses front ventilated discs and lead trailing drums in the rear. Chevy equipped the Tracker Redline with active and passive safety technologies that include anti-lock braking system, electronic stability control, emergency brake warning, rollover mitigation, enhanced understeer control, quartering brake control, traction control system, engine drag control, panic brake assist, hill start assist, low vacuum brake assist, no vacuum brake assist, fading brake assist, torque vectoring brakes, engine immobilizer, anti-theft alert system, and tire pressure monitoring system. Added for safety are front passenger and side airbags, ISOFIX system, five three-point ELR seat belts with indicators, and the driver and front passenger benefiting from force limiters. Parking is made more safe and convenient with a reverse camera with a wide 130-degree viewing angle and rear sensors. Toyota has equipped the Rays with anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control, blind spot monitor, rear cross-traffic alert, and hill start assist control. Parking is made easier with back monitor with guideline and front and rear clearance sonar or sensors. Other standard safety features on the Rays include 3-point ELR seat belts for 5, with a driver and front seat passenger also benefiting from force limiter and pretensioner. SRS airbags with a 1.0 turbo CVT also getting curtain air shield and side airbags, and child restraint system. The Rays also comes with a mobilizer and the Toyota vehicle security system. Looking at that amount and kind of interior, exterior, driver assist, and safety features Chevrolet and Toyota has specced their subcompact SUVs with, makes one wonder what will automakers come up with to make vehicles more competitive these days. Zoom UX. Take the lead. Are you into grassroots racing? Slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing. Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Ready?
Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Can the Suzuki Espresso AGS climb up to Baguio comfortably? Members of media got a chance to answer that question during the Suzuki Espresso Media Drive. Check out what happened and how the Espresso performed in this special feature. Yeah, we have several uh, testing before we conducted this one. We need to make sure that the uh, espresso can uh, climb the rough and uphill of, of Baguio, so, including the fuel consumption. We are very happy that uh, we are uh, able to prove our promise uh, to deliver automatic barrier of a well up model. At this time, uh, we do better uh, with uh, all upgrades. And Suzuki has done uh, so many upgrades to make new espresso and with uh, all aspects, uh, for example, looks, uh, performance, uh, and safety. Of course, you were efficient. Based on recent uh, test drive, uh, observed uh, by AAP, uh, we got uh, uh, 25.3 km uh, per liter of AGS. Yeah, uh, it is very uh, good fuel efficiency. So we have uh, two variants of espresso uh, manual mission. Uh, price is uh, 620,000 peso and uh, AGS uh, with uh, 660,000 pesos. Making espresso is, uh, has several improvements. Number one would be in terms of performance. So it, it's now equipped with a new KTNC engine with BBT and dual injection system. It also has engine auto stop start system which is very efficient in conserving fuel in the, in the city traffic. Overall, the aim of the new improvement was to make the espresso more fuel efficient. Recently, we had test drive as observed by AAP, wherein we got 25.3 kilometers per liter for the espresso. This was uh, along uh, SETEX and TPLEX, covering a total of 250 kilometers. Well, aside from the AGS, now we know the convenience of having an automated manual transmission. The new Espresso also have several improvements in terms of driving amenities and safety. For example, it is now equipped with electronic stability program, which are not commonly found on this segment, including the hill hold control. And in terms of entertainment, of course, it's now equipped with a 7-inch touch screen display with a Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity for a more uh, pleasurable ride. I would like to invite everyone to uh, please come visit the nearest Suzuki dealership nearest you and test ride the OU uh, Espresso. And you may also check our website at www.suzuki.com. We have uh, 72 uh, dealerships in nationwide. Uh, we have a, a lot of stock and uh, with a test drive unit, uh, everyone is welcome uh, to drive uh, Espresso. Thank you very much. Suzuki has built a reputation for turning out popular small vehicles that are both functional and fun. The Espresso is proving to be all that and could be even more popular with the AGS. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota we go. Welcome back. 
we have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This car review takes a close look at the BMW 318i Sport, one of the most sought out variants of the BMW 3 Series. BMW Philippines promised local auto enthusiasts an exciting 2023. The year's surely turning into an exciting one for Beamer lovers. Among the exciting additions to the local BMW lineup is the latest refresh of the BMW 3 Series. This is the BMW 318i Sport. BMW considers the 3 Series as the core of the brand, setting the global benchmark for driving pleasure in the premium compact sedan segment. The BMW 31i Sport arrived looking all sleek and lean with a muscular stance in a frame that is 4,709mm long, 1,827mm wide, and 1,435mm tall, with a 2,850mm long wheelbase. There's a lot to like in the refreshed 3 Series including the redesigned kidney grille with the double bars, the slimmer full LED headlamps with involved L-shaped daylight running lights, black and glossy air intakes in front that also serve to cool the brakes, which tell that the BMW 318i is all about performance. Some lighting elements are carried over in the rear that looks both sophisticated and sporty, with the flared wheel arches and the diffuser that houses that twin tailpipe finishers that measure 100mm in diameter. The BMW 3 Series features an interior that serves to make driving the sports sedan pleasurable and just riding in it comfortable. This is all the more enhanced in the refreshed BMW 318i Sport with a BMW curved display and the latest iDrive operating system 8. The driver and front passenger seats can be slid forwards and backwards, angled and adjusted for height. The backrest reclines and the headrest also adjusts for height. All to provide the best possible preferred driving position, help along by a sport leather steering wheel with thick rims and contoured thumb rest for pleasant, high grip feel. What BMW calls the Live Cockpit Plus comes with a 12.3 inch information display behind the steering wheel and 14.9 inch infotainment touchscreen display in the center right above the vents and controls for the 3 zone automatic air conditioning system. Infotainment comes with smart connectivity, including Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, and USB and AUX portals. The touchscreen display works with BMW Intelligent Voice Assistance to allow fewer buttons and controls on the dash. The new BMW 318i Sport is also fitted with the BMW Maps Navigation System. Voice commands can also be used to adjust the air conditioning system. The gear selector lever for the 8-speed Steptronic transmission is easily within reach on the center console, along with the start-stop button, iDrive controller, driving experience control buttons, including those for the electronic parking brake and other vehicle functions. Other standard comfort and convenience features in the BMW 318i include power windows, speed sensing power door locks, keyless entry. The new BMW 318i Sport arrived with 4-cylinder gasoline engine with an upgraded turbocharger system to optimize power delivery maximizing at 156 horsepower and 250 Nm of torque. All that power and torque are smoothly transmitted to the rear wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission with Steptronic giving drivers some control over gear shifts. BMW has equipped the 3 Series a host of automated driving and parking systems that include cruise control with brake function, manual speed limit assist, dynamic stability control, dynamic traction control, and parking assist with a reversing assist camera. Other safety and security features in the BMW 318i include driver and front passenger airbags, side airbags, curtain airbags, auto brake system, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, isofix child restraint system, immobilizer, and security alarm. The new BMW 318i Sport also comes with a 5-year comprehensive BMW warranty. With a 3.790 million peso price tag, the BMW 318i Sport can still be called a value-for-money Beamer. But then it counts pesos when it comes to purchasing BMWs in the country. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Okay, now we're going to talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're going to talk about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what 
caster is and all of this stuff but what we're gonna be talking about is a bit more practical how to know if your car needs alignment or not and how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned so, so if they did a sucky job you can always tell them that hey car's not aligned it's a back job The easiest test that anybody can do, actually, you do it unconsciously. You always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because, as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel, and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop you let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're gonna explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber. This is positive camber. Almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber both on the front and in the back why they do this because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner the wheels actually straighten out so we're gonna exaggerate it a bit so you have a car that says negative camber like this when you corner weight shifts out the wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on the road and when you turn the other way the same thing happens weight is on this wheel this wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on this one so that's what camber is the next question is hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako the answer is no <laughs> the amount of camber is very very slight usually a degree is a lot so it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree that's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3's have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear, um, hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuputput yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuputput sa, lo sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, i-rotate mo na lang yung goma para maputput naman yung labas. <laughs> but as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly slightly towed in from the factory and it's pretty easy to see if you have an old uh, transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that obviously it will not go straight it's wobbled like this it will also not go straight if it's straight like this with very very slightly pointing inward then this will actually go straight when you roll it <laughs> having the opposite of like that this will also go straight but it will be very wiggly so most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out, and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test, if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel. That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go run straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at kumakabig, then you need an alignment.
that's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. And when you ask it to turn, and it turns, and it's not malikot, it's not all over the road. That is handling for the common person. <laughs>that's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.